Today I have a Sheldon Bennett from DMG Blockchain. How are you, Sheldon? Great. Thank you for having me back. I love DMG Blockchain. This is an incredible stock with a great storyline. You just announced your first U.S.-based data center. What does that mean? And tell our audience more about this, please. Yeah, this is a really interesting announcement for our company. Uh, as people know, our stock over many years now, we've been very focused in Canada. Uh, and that hasn't changed. But at the same time, we can't ignore the growth in AI in the US and the consumption of AI and just the demand. Every company that I talk to, which are mainly crypto companies that have moved into AI, have all said they can't convert enough space that they have, and what by space I mean power, that they have to AI quick enough for the amount of demand there is out there. Um, and, and we kind of are starting to see this in Canada. Canada's a little bit slower, it's smaller population, new government form, new budgets coming out, is trying to figure out where it's going. Business generally in Canada has been buying compute services from the U.S., from Canada as well, but not, not near as much as you would buy from a Google Cloud or an Amazon AWS. And so Canada itself has its own plans to grow sovereign AI and grow sort of larger companies in, in providing these services. But that's going to take a little bit of time. Currently, though, in the U.S., the demand is so great. You can't build enough capacity and get enough GPUs on fast enough. And you can see this when you go to use something like ChatGPT. If you were using it a year ago when it was like 3 or 3.5, it was giving you an answer pretty fast. Now we're on ChatGPT 5, and it's taking longer to get an answer. And that's because uh, the system is waiting for GPUs to be available because they're all busy working. And so when we uh, looked at this property, it was actually offered to us probably six, eight months ago. Uh, we kind of hummed and hawed about it for Bitcoin mining, and we, we looked at it and said, well, you know what, this is probably better as an AI data center than Bitcoin mining because of the location. And the location is really unique, and, and it's really why we picked this property, is that location has five, six, seven probably, I can't count them, they're so huge, AWS or Amazon Web Services data centers. They're massive data centers, they're huge buildings. Uh, taking you know huge amounts of power, backup generation, water cooling for Amazon. They have, I think, five or six being built right now un under construction, plus new substations. So this is the one of the epicenters of compute for AWS. Um, and we just got lucky through uh, somebody that actually watches our stock. There's a stockholder that owned this property. At least I believe they're a stockholder because they seem to know our stock very well. Uh, that owns this property and their circumstances changed for why they had that property and they no longer had a use for it. And so they called me up out of the blue and I got a cold, well, actually it wasn't a phone call, it was an email, cold email and said, hey, I got this property. I kind of know who you guys are. Are you interested in buying it? And so I called the person up and started talking to them and went down to Oregon, looked at the property. And there was actually, he was subletting part of the property out to a Bitcoin miner. <laughs> So <laughs> that was kind of interesting to see. Uh, we kind of looked and did some due diligence on the size, the ability to grow. We talked to the utility. We looked at the neighbors. We kind of knew what was going on there. And we said, yeah, this is a property we need to have. So you pointed out this property is in Oregon. And I was reading the, it's a huge uh, 27,600 square foot building. Uh, and, you're buy and you're buying it. You put a deposit yeah. to actually buy it, correct? Yeah. That's correct. So we're buying, so the, the land is owned by uh, by one company uh, that, uh, you know, gathered large amounts of land back, in, in, you know, a long time ago. What we've learned is that we can buy that land. Um, and so we're talking to the owner of the land and, and that was paid by AWS. AWS was originally leasing the land. They said we feel more comfortable owning the land that we're on than, than having a landlord lease. And so... The, uh, the landlord started selling. And it's the same landlord AAWS as, as, as we would have. Um, and so we're gonna you know, look at negotiating to buy that land as well, the eight uh, acres that we're on with the building, plus the additional tenant are um, right next to us so that we would have a lot of extra space to grow over time. Now I'll tell you, this is absolutely fascinating to me. And of course, for those of you out there going AWS, that is Amazon Web Services, correct? Yeah. Yes. That is sort of, 
the giant in compute where you know enterprise business puts all of their data and information software developers normally grow on aws they sort of grow on on their platform where they build code and then uh release code so it's it's quite well known uh, aws is sort of the largest data center company in north america there are some other big ones obviously microsoft google oracle are all large companies as well um, but AWS, uh, AWS is 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 you know uh, probably the largest um, data center company out there. In the news release, you specifically say that the expansion to the U.S. complements your strategy to lead development of Canadian sovereign AI infrastructure. Maybe go backwards and tell us a little bit more about your Canadian AI infrastructure you have in place. Yeah, that's a great question. So we're right now going on two tracks on Canadian sovereign AI. Track one is working with Canadian military. Uh, obviously, we've gone after the Canadian military because we know there is a large amount of upgrades and expansion the Canadian military wants to do uh, around AI and quantum compute, uh, which is all infrastructure that we can provide. Uh, we also have these skip rated uh, prefabricated data centers that we have been discussing for the Canadian military, which are something they can purchase immediately. They don't have to wait for them to be built and deploy wherever they would like. And so that, those conversations are going ahead. We're discussing uh, different, different scenarios around the, the prefabricated data centers, as well as building out infrastructure on Canadian military locations uh, using our skills and expertise and power management, uh, as well as our ability to get into the chips, the NVIDIA chips or the NDA chips uh, in that long lead supply chain. So that's a great conversation going ahead. A second conversation is sort of the enterprise uh, look at AI in Canada. And that second look is really at a federal level across Canada. What does the Canadian government want to do? Where is it trying to ensure it has ad adequate capacity, not just for government, but for society? And what I mean by that is the Canadian government's looking at do universities have access to sovereign AI, AI in which their IP they develop on these chips stays in Canada and is safe uh, from other you know, eyes looking at what's going on. And that's a big thing for them uh, to, to ensure. So on the second track, you know, we've been proposing out to the federal government areas where we have power or we have access to power, partners that we have in the power industry, as well as the, the locations. And we're trying to work towards some type of agreement whereby if we were to go ahead and invest, there's the potential that uh, the federal government or an agency within the government would be a partner. Not It doesn't necessarily have to be a 100% partner, but it would be somebody that would be a future revenue stream for the infrastructure we would build. And that track is working quite well. We've sort of been focusing on the West Coast and the East Coast, which is sort of the areas uh, of dense population and trying to get close to city centers for latency. So data centers, crypto defense, Let's talk about your blockchain aspect of your industry. Can you give us an update? Yeah, on the crypto blockchain side, you know, DMG is still moving ahead as it always has. Uh, we're um, looking at uh, expanding our capacity. Um, we've said that, that we have a goal to reach three exahas by the end of the year. We may push that goal a bit now that we've made this investment into the U.S. So that's going to take uh, a, a fair bit of capital. Um, uh, to get that up and running. Um, so we may delay uh, our three exa hash at the end of this year, but it's not going to stop it. Um, we have been busy making changes to our Christian Lake facility to convert more of our air cooled infrastructure to higher um, to liquid cool. So water cool base, uh, which is more efficient uh, and, and gets us better hash rate. Um, so that's all going ahead. And shortly, and what I mean by shortly, I think in the next few months before Christmas, we'll have uh, our reactor product, uh, which is buying and selling of hash rates. So for those of you that are in the world of crypto, you can actually not own a Bitcoin miner. You can just buy a contract for the hash rate output, which equates into Bitcoin um, from different providers of that. And so DMG is a provider of that where you can buy hash rate, where we'll supply that hash rate and we'll find a, another party that will supply that hash rate deliver it to you in the form of what you would get would be Bitcoin in return for that. And that's a very popular product. Um, a lot of institutional investors buy hash rate contracts as a way they can get Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Um, and with this particular product, Reactor, we're going to partner up with our trust company, Systemic Trust, and provide some uh, 
uh, I guess, enhanced terms if you use a systemic trust as your DAT or your digital asset treasury company. If you want to put your assets into our trust company, you want to use Reactor to get more you know, Bitcoin or whatever digital asset you want to, uh, to, to purchase, um, then we're going to work together to try and make that more efficient if you were to kind of keep it all in the DMG ecosystem. You can use Terrapool, you can use Reactor, and you can also use our trust company, Systemic Trust. And of course, DMG has a very competitive, sustainable uh, aspect to the technology you utilize. Can you comment on that? Yeah, DMG itself, uh, we're in British Columbia. We're in all clean energy, so we're all in hydropower. Um, so we've always had uh, what we call uh, carbon-free Bitcoin generation. Uh, we sit on a lot of carbon-free Bitcoin. We produce carbon-free Bitcoin every day. Um, so we've always been sort of a very green company when it comes to uh, crypto and the blockchain and, and the asset that we create. If someone were to ask me what some of the most competitive elements are surrounding DMG blockchain, I would say you're one of the godfathers of cryptocurrency and you're exceedingly smart. I think you got a master's in rare earth elements. Is that correct? That is correct. We've spoken about that before. One of the few people on the planet, I think, that did that. So what would you tell individuals who are new to DMG blockchain? What are some of the most competitive elements with regards to DMG blockchain? So I think... I think a lot of people need to understand that DMG, we're coming up in 2026 as one decade, so 10 years operating in crypto, which makes us one of the earliest companies in this business. Um, and that's a big thing, because if you look at the crypto companies out there now, many of them aren't around that started 10 years ago when I did uh, as DMG, and I started previous to that with another company. Uh, the ones that are around are four years old, maybe five is considered old. Um, so, you know, we've really outlasted a lot of companies and we've done that because we're very cautious in how we operate and what we do. So we, um, uh, pride ourselves on being stewards of capital. And what I mean by that is that when you buy a share in DMG, I'm a steward of your capital. You put your money into our company and I'm trying to ensure that that money, you know, gets most out of it and you get a good return for it. And that's easy to say and hard to do. And one of the reasons why we haven't grown immensely is because we've looked at that capital and said, you know, what's the payback on that? Does that make a lot of sense? Where is that going to go? Where does that lead us to? Does that give us a long, sustainable business or is that just short term gain and long term problem? And we spent a lot of time at that, which is why we really picked what we wanted to do. And one of our greatest successes is saying no. We say no to a lot of stuff and people say, well, that's not a success. You, you, you're not doing business. You're not growing but that's not true. We're just not making bad decisions. And it's really easy to make a bad decision when a project's given to you because you haven't really thought it through and it doesn't quite fit into what you need to do to grow your business. And so those are kind of the things that we think about as we're growing uh, DMG. And I think we've done a good job. We sit on a $130 million of asset, you know, around $50 million of Bitcoin. So for a small company like we are to have Canadian operations in crypto and moving into AI, now adding US operations, to have all of our blockchain operations, our software companies, as well as our regulated trust here in Canada. I think we've done a lot in a short period of time, and it's very stable. There's no sort of risk around whether or not we're going to make payroll or we're going to be able to meet all our debt obligations. So nearly one decade, $130 million in assets and $50 million in crypto. Is that correct? That's correct. So what should shareholders be looking forward to in the upcoming quarter? I think they're going to see a quarter where um, more of our expansion and growth into AI is going to be seen. I think they're going to see more about our trust company uh, and its growth and starting to get more customer acquisition. Um, and I think they're going to see another strong quarter from us. Uh, we're one of the few companies out there. When you look at our financial statements, we've actually had financial positive quarters. And a lot of people don't know what that means when you say, well, what, are you, what are you talking about? Of course, you should be making money. There's two things you need to be aware of in the world of crypto. Most of us can make an operational margin, so we can make cash more than our cost, and whatever that number may be, whatever that percentage is, we always had a good operational margin, so we're always generating cash. But when you bring in depreciation and share-based compensation, this is where most crypto companies never make a profit. And so that depreciation cost, and that's basically the cost of the equipment you bought with all that cash depreciated over multiple years, when you add that in, most crypto companies are not financially positive. That depreciation eats up all that cash in the financial statements, and you're not actually doing very well 
as a crypto mining company because you can't beat your depreciation. So you're basically not making enough cash and generating enough cash for the depreciation of your, equip of, of your equipment, which means how are you going to pay for your future equipment? Um, and so this is a really important point. Uh, and, 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 and I'll admit, we haven't always uh, been positive financially. We have sometimes, but we've never had to write down our equipment. And what's really important about that um, is if, if you have to write down your equipment in a meaningful way, that means you pay too much money for the amount of revenue it generates for you in the future. And so we've been really good at balancing our payment. And these are large payments and tens of millions of dollars for our crypto mining equipment. We've been really good at balancing when we buy it and when we put it into service in its whole life so that the cash it generates over time is very positive for our company. DMG Blockchain. Crypto miners that are stewards of capital. For more information, please go to the following website. Sheldon, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.